things and some new faces. Welcome. We are glad that you are here. I'm Laura. I'm one of the pastors here in case I have not met you, but I met a lot of new people today. So hopefully I've met everyone. If not, we have a Connect Center just out from the sanctuary to your right. So feel free to stop there if you didn't on your way in. We have a gift for you. We'd love to meet you. And we're going to get started with some worship. So why don't you guys go ahead and stand? So last week we celebrated Easter, right? And um, we celebrated his resurrection. So, you know, Jesus died on a cross, was buried, was in a tomb for three days. And then on the third day, he rose again. And um, because of that, we too can enter into resurrection life. And so there is victory in Jesus. This is the song we're going to sing this morning. So let's get your hands together. All right. You can dance, you can jump, you can shout. All right, let's just worship the Lord together, all right? I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How He made His life on Calvary To save a wretch like me Toning. Then I repented of my sins and won a victory. Come on. Oh, victory is Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged Victory beneath the cleansing flood. Yeah, get your hands together. Come on. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see. And then I cried, Dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Come on. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. This is my dad, by the way. Yeah. Good job, Dad. You still got it. <laughs> I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angels singing the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Come on. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me, he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Get your hands together. Oh, victory. Cleansing blood, oh victory in 
Jesus. Victory! Woo! Yes! Yes, Lord, you can have a seat. Well, welcome everyone. My name is Debbie, and I am happy you're all here today, the Sunday after Resurrection Sunday. I have just a handful of announcements on my handy dandy phone. So, if you are new, a special welcome to you. We consider ourselves a family on a mission, a place to be needed and known and discipled and equipped. And so everything we do is centered around that mission statement. If you are new and you have children here, we have a wonderful children's program led by our wonderful uh, Pastor Catherine. So, um, but if you have them, you can still sign them up. They will be safe and secure and also have a great fun time learning about Jesus. Um, for sixth grade through ninth grade, after the uh, singing, uh, they'll be released to their own uh, classroom. And then sophomores and up are welcome to stay here. So, so there's just a handful of things. Let me see if I can pull this up because there's one thing that I didn't have on the slides. So, and let's see. Do, do, do. And Zach, can you go to the next slide? And oh, so if you want to connect with us, if you are new, there's a, in the atrium, we have the Connect Center with the small gift that she mentioned, so we would like to meet you. Um, you can also fill out the card in the seat back in front of you as well. And let's see, your Church Center app. That's what I've been busy pulling up. On your Church Center app, you can do everything. You can find people in the directory. You can do your tithing. You can actually find ways, other ways to give your time and energy or money. There's different um, like charity type things that we do. And then also all your events are on here as well. So when I went to the events, I was like, ooh, there's stuff going on. So Alpha starts tonight. And there's still time to sign up and come tonight. And it starts at 5. And there's food. So, and there's child care. All the things you need, okay? And youth, and youth. So there you go. It's encompassing everyone. So come tonight. And the next thing is just to put on your calendars. Um, in a couple of weeks, we have our annual congregational meeting right after the service. Let's see. What else do we have? Oh, we have the disability etiquette and tea time lunches coming up too. So you might want to mark your calendars for that. And then this weekend, we also have the rooted youth lock-in. Um, that. I mean, good luck. I mean, they're going to be up all night. I don't know about you guys, but like up all night, that is not, does not sound like fun to me, but I'm sure it is for the youth, okay? <laughs> yes, middle school and high schoolers are welcome. And Zach, do I have anything else on there? Nope. Okay, so the one thing, do I have it on here? Oh, okay. Listen to this. So we have um, a worship conference coming here to our church. So we're excited because years ago we would, we would go somewhere. So we're having it here towards the end of April and we're all very excited about this for our team. We're going to have what's called a worship circle and it's on your event page where you can find out all the details. But the gist of it is y'all come and if you play an instrument, you bring that instrument. If you have a voice, you bring that. And it does not have to be in harmony or, you know, because I'm going to sing, and they don't usually give me a mic except to talk, okay? So if that tells you anything. So exactly. Make a joyful noise. So but that's going to be super fun. So look on that. It's going to be a Saturday evening from like 6 to 8. So it's going to be great. So consider doing that. Um, I, I think it will just be a really fun time. So I just wanted to mention that. And the next thing is I'm going to turn this over to Miss Catherine. Okay. Thank you. I think we are good. Good morning, everyone. I brought my friend Pam with me today. Everybody say hi, Pam. Sorry, I usually work with the children, so that's what we do. <laughs> when there's a new phase, we, we, everybody say hi, and we welcome them. So um, Debbie mentioned just a bit ago that we're having a disability etiquette class along with our team time lunch. So three times a year, I get my volunteers for kids ministry together for team time. And so if you're a kids volunteer, this is for you. But I wanted to make a special announcement because the disability etiquette class is for anyone and everyone. And I wanted to just kind of answer like, well, why are we doing this? Why are we having this? Um, what is it all about? So that you guys would know. So um, if you consider yourself a member or even a visitor here, this is for you and you're welcome to join us. Um, and I, I made notes free of me, but that's just how I roll. Um, so this class is for anyone who wants to gain an increased awareness of what it's like to live with a disability, 
and how you can better care for people and families who are affected by disability. So often, people find disabilities intimidating because they see the disability rather than seeing the person. And so the goal of this class is to help you see the person instead of just seeing the disability. Because people who live with disabilities have the same needs that typical people have. They need friendship and encouragement and acceptance and love and all of that. Um, and so this class will help us to see beyond the disability and see the person that we can connect with. We have a lot of families in our church that are affected by disability. Um, and so my goal for this class is that it will better equip us as a church to welcome those families and those individuals fully into our church family and to meet their needs. Um, in addition, part of what I hope to do through this class is to expand our buddy ministry. So our buddy ministry right now um, is basically special helpers in our Sunday school classrooms who focus their assistance on the kiddos who need that little extra help because of their unique needs and their disabilities. We have several children <clears throat> who are living with disabilities, including my own daughter. So this ministry is very close to my heart. Um, and the ministry actually began because when she was little, I would meet people who would say, well, we can't go to church because church doesn't know how to care for my kid. And that broke my heart. I was like, man, this church will not be that place. We will be the place that we can take care of kids um, who have different needs and different abilities. And so it's so wonderful to me to be able to come here and know that my kiddo is safe and cared for and learning about Jesus in a way that she can understand. Um, it's really hard to explain to people who aren't affected by disability what it's like um, even just raising a kid, like I don't personally have disability that affects my life um, in the way that hers does, but I'm raising her and advocating for her. And so I, when I try to explain it to people, the closest thing I can think of is that imagine if, or if you have the experience of living with a chronic illness, that's kind of what it's like. There's a lot of things that you can't do. There's a lot of limitations that you have because you're living with a disability or a person who has a disability. And the goal of supporting those people is to help them um, remove those obstacles so that they can fully participate as much as possible. And shouldn't they be able to fully participate in church? And so that's my goal for our buddy ministry is to help kiddos um, but I'm also seeing it go beyond kiddos because there's a lot of adults living with disability who are part of our church family as well, and we want to be knowing how to support them and care for them. But I want to um, put out there that we need more buddies, um, and it's really, it seems intimidating. Like I said, sometimes you see the disability and not the person. So this is why I brought my friend Pam today, because Pam is a buddy, and so I'm going to ask her just to share a little bit about what she's experienced because um, I just, I don't want people to be intimidated. You know, um, one of our neighbors does it best about Sophie, my daughter, like she's just a little girl, you know, and when you can see that, then it's not so intimidating. So this is my friend Pam, and um, she's going to talk about her experience in the buddy ministry. So how long have you been part of the buddy ministry? About a year. Okay. I have to turn the page. Sorry. That's fine. Two-sided printing. Save the trees. All right. Did you have any background helping people with disabilities when you got started? I've had no um, specific training with children um, who had special needs. No. So that means anybody can do it. <laughs> right? Yes. How and why did you get started as a buddy? Um, my volunteering started um, simply by being asked. I was invited. Uh, Marilyn Grubb and Becky Hill invited me to be part of the nursery program. And on one particular day, I was in the nursery, and there was this very energetic young man who <laughs> was unable to land at any one spot and stay there. And I had no clue what to do for him. It seemed like he needed to be centered, but I didn't know what that looked like. But fortunately for him, he had a buddy that day who was Kelly Bradbury. And I observed her techniques with him, and she was able to calm him, to center him, and manage to teach him the Bible lesson of the day. And at the end of the day, I thought, I want to do that. I don't know what it means, but I want to learn how to do that. So I went to Catherine and said, I want to learn. And she said, great, 
I want to teach. Yes. And I'm so glad that you can share that experience because I know a lot of people just feel like they wouldn't know what to do in that situation. And, and I didn't. And you didn't. And yet you were able to learn um, and you were able to be trained. Like you observed for what? Three different occasions observing and working with the kiddos. I was, I shadowed and was mentored by Kathleen Householder, Chelsea Rao, and these ladies are amazing. Mm -hmm. And I watched their techniques and how they handled each situation. And no child has the same needs on any given day. If they like to keep us guessing. And the more you volunteer, the more you learn the child, and the easier each chance gets. All you have to do is want to be a friend. Oh, I love that. So what are some of the things that you do as a buddy? Just some days, um, they it. don't need you to do anything, but observe their needs. And other days, you'll see that maybe the environment's too loud and there are headphones available, and you can slow down that background noise for them. Sometimes they just need someone to sit by them, or they need to be left alone. I mean, each time you go in, you, you just learn them, and you see what they need, and some days they don't need anything. Some days they need the environment to be changed. So you may come out into the atrium with them where it's quiet, and it's about them. And everybody is, um, has contact with the, the Bible lesson for that week. So no matter where you are with this child, you can still give them the lesson that's been scheduled for them that day. Right, and sometimes it's just a change of environment so that they're more um, calm and ready to receive the lesson. And so it's not, it's not rocket science. Like you said, it's just being a friend to, to, to somebody and observing their needs. Um, I've seen buddies, you know, get, a, get an extra drink for a kid that needs to calm down, take them for a little walk or... Um, you know, redirect, you know, hey, let's not do that, or let's make a different choice, or let's go get a Band-Aid, you know, just simple things like that. Um, so what would you say to someone who's intimidated to join the buddy ministry because they aren't experienced? Follow your heart. If you really have a desire for this, or if you feel the Holy Spirit moving you, don't ignore that, and you will be taught. I knew I didn't know what to do, I mean, watching Kelly and her approaches with this young man was impressive because all I saw was this young man who was moving everywhere and had no, no ability to slow his body down. Mm -hmm. And with some simple techniques, she did that. And all this information is available. The families are amazing. They equip the, the teachers and the buddies with tools and with prompts, you know, what to look for. And you just have to want to do it. And mm -hmm. Catherine and her team will teach you. Thank you. I really appreciate you sharing your heart. I know it's not your favorite thing to be up in front of all the no, people. No, it's not. <laughs> she likes to be back with the kiddos. But you don't have to be interested in the buddy ministry to come to this lunch. Um, that's for The lunch is for everyone, and it will be kind of two parts. So, yes, we will feed you. Yes, we will watch your children while you do this class, um, which, by the way, is going to be given by um, an organization called Johnny and Friends, and it's, it's actually global. If you've ever heard of Johnny Erickson Tata, you can look her up and her story. She is a ministry to equip churches is to do this kind of thing. So they're coming and they're going to give the class on disability etiquette. And then um, after that class portion is done, then all of the children's volunteers will stay. And anyone who's interested in the buddy ministry can stay for the second portion to kind of learn more about what we're doing and how we're doing it. Um, so I invite you RSVP on Church Center, and I invite you to come to this class so you can learn how to see the person. Thank you. And we'll feed you, so come eat with us. Yes, I love that Catherine does a great job um, teaching and training, you know, so um, it's not like we're just shoving you in the dark somewhere. So church family, please sign up for that. Um, come join us for lunch and it will be a quick hour, probably no more than that, um, after service on April 28th. Um, and I just love that we are a church family that welcomes all abilities. And just like Catherine said, that these families, these people um, that have different abilities, they are welcome here and that we see the person and not the disability. That's what Jesus does, right? So why don't you stand? We're going to continue in worship. Um, 
So we're singing a couple vineyard songs today, um, and you can find those if you're like, I don't know that I know where to find vineyard songs on the Church Center app. On the bottom right, there is a more button, and you can go on there, and whatever platform that you listen to music, just click on your platform, and it will take you right to the worship uh, vineyard worship page. So um, anyway, there's that. And then you see this beautiful table set up in front of us. This is the first Sunday of the month, and we celebrate communion together as a church family on the first Sunday of the month. So we'll do that toward the end of worship here. So um, that's coming. And um, I have a scripture to share uh, before we sing this song. Um, it is John 14, 27, and we can read it together. Will you read it with me? This is Jesus saying, I am leaving you with a gift peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Jesus has a gift for each one of us. Jesus has a gift for you today, every single day. It's the gift, the gift of peace. And with that comes joy and all the other fruits of the Spirit. So we're going to sing about that this morning, all right? Here we go. Lord, come Holy Spirit, have your way in us, God. May we make a joyful noise unto you. Trouble had me weary, tried to keep me down, almost had me thinking there's no hope to be found. The voice of the accuser won't have the final say. Those are empty threats of yesterday. I'm waking up in love, your love. I'm waking up in hope, your hope. I'm waking up in peace, your peace. You set me free, even in my weakness. You say I am strong, even in this darkness. To Jesus I belong. I serve a God much stronger than every circumstance. Jesus holds my future in His hands. I'm waking up in love, Your love. I'm waking up in hope, Your hope. I'm waking up in peace, Your peace. You said. didn't give it nothing can take it away this joy I have the world didn't give it and nothing can take it away this joy I have the world didn't give it and nothing can take it away this joy Nothing can take it away This joy I have The world didn't give it And nothing can take it away This joy I have The world didn't give it And nothing can take it away I'm waking up in love Your love I'm waking up You 
can take it away. Amen. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you, Jesus, for who you are, God. We praise you, God, for that. Thank you for your word that when we are are thinking other things, the world is telling us other things, we can go to your word and we can read the truth of what you say about us, God. Because what you say, God, is what matters. That's what should matter. And Lord, you say that we are your sons and your daughters. You claim us, God. We don't have to clean ourselves up before we come to you. You say, come as you are. Thank you, Lord. With one voice we sing in worship and in wonder, saying you alone are unlike any other. Hear our praises as we welcome you together, Jesus. There's no need to fear, no need for hesitation. There's a name that echoes over all creation. Jesus. Lift him high. Lift him high above the heavens, over every situation that surrounds us. Sing his name with expectation, for the God of our salvation is among us. You never leave us nor forsake us, God. In you we find a true and firm foundation. There's no need to fear, no need for hesitation. There's a name that echoes over all creation, and it's Jesus. Lift him high above the heavens, over every situation that surrounds us. expectation for the God of our salvation is among us. He is here right now. So let's lift him high. Lift him high above the heavens over every situation that surrounds us. Every situation. Sing his name. Sing his name with expectation for the God of salvation is among us. He is here right now. Jesus, 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 oh Jesus, Jesus, my Jesus. Jesus, 
salvation for the God of our salvation is among us oh lift him high above the heavens over every situation that surrounds us sing his name with expectation for the God of our salvation is among us. Sing it, Jesus. 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 Yes, give him praise. We love you, Lord. We love you, God. And you are high and lifted up over every situation that surrounds us. We can simply say, Jesus, we place you over that. You come. You have control over that, God. And do what only you can do. There is power in your name, God. Let's sing this song, We Believe Together. In this time of desperation, when all we know is doubt and fear, there is only one foundation we believe. collectively unified 
ringing out, proclaiming, God, we do. We just lift you up in every way we can. And each of us, in whatever place we are right now, whether we know you or we are interested in you, even those who are skeptical of knowing you, God, as much as we can, we lean in to you right now, God. Just help, help us to, to come to you even now, right before, as we come to take communion, God, as we, as we come to, to understand and say yes to you one more time, and again, wherever we are, that we would, even if it's a little bit, we would say, we believe, and we also recognize our desperate need for you, God. So I'm going to ask the communion stewards to come forward and prepare the elements. And um, if you were able at any level to just enter into that song, and just if, if it's even just a, a, a tiny bit to say, I believe, Jesus, that you died for my sin. If you can get there even a little bit, Jesus invites, he invites every one of us to his table to partake, to understand, God, I understand what you did on the cross, that your body was broken for me, and that you poured out your blood, that you, were will, that you willingly died and sacrificed yourself so that I, as God looks at me, God the Father, he sees your righteousness, Jesus. As I said, we're going to come and take the elements here in just a moment. And we're going to have um, the stewards on, on four different corners here. And so if you're in these center two sections, we're going to have you. You're going to come forward. You're going to come and receive your elements up front and then head back to these kind of two center, two, they're not really center, wherever those aisles here. If you're on the outside sections, you're going to go outwards and then work your way towards the inside for those. Okay? I'm wondering if we should bring everybody through the center. Or you want to do that? We're missing the bread on the side. Kidding. Sorry, guys. I'm just realizing we're missing. So logistics, let's have everyone come through the center and then go back to their seats, okay? Let's do that. So we're going to have everybody come through the center and then kind of work your way back here. Just as long as you get up here at some point, it is good, right? So, Lord, we just pray your blessing and covering on these elements as they come forward to receive these. Just be honored, Lord, as we just choose to commune with you. So go ahead and, and come forward and take and receive your elements and work your way back to your seat. Thank you for your patience. When you get back to your seats, just go ahead and have a seat. And then we'll take the elements together at your seat.
We believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. And He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that He conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And He's coming back again. We believe. singing this with us church as you've received your elements or as you're going through you can be singing this as you're walking or sitting we believe in God the Father we believe in Jesus Christ we believe in the Holy Spirit and he's given us new life we believe crucifixion. We believe that he conquered death. We believe in the resurrection and he's coming back again. We believe. We believe God. We believe these things, Lord, because we believe in you, Jesus. We believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. And He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that He conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And He's coming back again. We believe. of the body of Christ that's broken for us. And, 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 the, and the juice, it represents his blood that's poured out on our behalf. And there's such a unifying thing that we, we're standing on the shoulders of thousands upon thousands, hundreds of thousands of people who have come before us who have taken this very meal and, and have received this. And, and just the, the unity that comes with that is just so incredibly touching. And I... I Considered an honor to take communion with you this morning. Scripture says this in 1 Corinthians. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's take the bread together. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's take the cup together. Thank you, God, that you invite us to your table over and over, regardless of what we've done this week, this month, whether good or bad or indifferent, Lord, that, that you just welcome us right where we are, exactly who we are. And Lord, we praise you. Thank you for all that you've done on our behalf. We just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, team. That was good. Um, as we get into this, um, b before I get too deep into my message, I want to just once again invite you to Alpha. If you've never 
Um, you've probably heard us talking about us. Maybe you're tired of it, but this is an incredible program. And if you at all are just wanting to know more about Jesus and, and you're newer in your faith, maybe you're totally skeptical about what faith is, who Jesus is, why did he have to die, all the things, we invite you to come to Alpha. Uh, and we've encouraged you not only to come to Alpha, but also to invite others. And we had a drawing. We actually haven't had the drawing, but we've entered names into a, a drawing to, for those who have invited friends, family, coworkers, even people you don't like to come to Alpha. And we, we um, put your names in a drawing for a $50 Ale House gift card. And the winner is... What? Oh, you forgot to put... It's not Debbie Hamilton. <laughs> is there a not Debbie Hamilton in here? The winner is Miss Robin Nettles. Yay! And I'm available just about any night this week. I love Ale House. Seven Pepper Burger, any fans? Yes? This is for you, dear. Yep. There you go. Check up on me. There is still time to invite. We're starting tonight. Um, even if you haven't registered, sign up. Just come. Again, that's at 5 o'clock. And the, the key words there are free food. Um, but the basics, <laughs> that's not really. It's, it's all about God, and he, just, he likes food, too. But so we're talking about, we've been talking about Alpha and the significance of this. And it's really important that I remember that we have ushers back there to take our tithes and offerings. Boy, I'm scattered. Come on forward, gentlemen. We got a lot to get through, but we ought to be able to do it in the next couple hours. So that's a dumb pastor's thing. Like, don't they always say that? Like, well, we'll have you out here in two hours. And yet I keep saying it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Darren's going to leave, but all right. Well, Lord, we just ask your blessing on these tithes and offerings. Um, we choose to be um, what you call us to in the Bible and just be generous with what you've already given us. You've poured out so much, so much blessing in our lives, Lord, and, and we just right now choose to be generous and give back into your kingdom. And we just ask that, that you would do miraculous things and just let us see into what you're doing, especially here at Life Church Vineyard and beyond these walls. We just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to pass the baskets. You'll also see possibly uh, different ways you can give online. Um, so yeah, we thank you for that. So we're talking about Alpha and just what it is. It, it's just Christianity 101. It's incredibly foundational. It's, it's what Christianity is about. It's who Jesus is. Why did he die? Um, how should I read the Bible? Why should I read the Bible? How should I pray? All these different things I think are incredible for us to know and learn. Um, but then also, kind of like we were singing in the song today, talking about we believe. And, and today we're going to look at the Apostles' Creed. And I don't know if you've ever read it before, but, but it's also a foundational to our faith. It's, it's this foundational document that the early founding fathers came up with to make sure that with all the noise, all the things, the, the, the different sects of um, of, of Judaism and of Christianity and other religions and this hodgepodge, it was a way to kind of centralize everyone to get to a common thread of belief in our faith. So again, we're going to be looking at the Apostles' Creed, and here in just a second, I want us to read that together. Um, but this, this word creed just mean, it comes from the Latin word credo, which just means this thing, I believe. Here's what as Christians, here is what we believe. With all the peripheral things that are going on in our faith and the ways we can scatter and, and, and there's so much divisiveness, this are, these are the things that we can agree on. So I want us to read this together and I want to read it just kind of slowly and with purpose. This is not, let's not rush through it. So read this together with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, this, this is, the, one thing that you'll notice is that this is not, that this has not come directly from the Bible. And it is incredibly biblical, but it is not like words that were written in the Bible. This was adopted by, again, our early forefathers um, who, who decided to use this creed to centralize um, all of us around a common uh, thread of our faith. And so this was memorized, it was recited together um, often, a lot like we do the Lord's Prayer. It was just recited when they get together. Oftentimes it was recited at a baptism just to kind of m to, to, to make sure that, okay, this is where we're starting from. This is a great starting point, a foundation of our faith, and everything else can be built upon that. But critics nowadays, so we, um, um, I'm trying to be a little bit, pick through my notes here. But this, this very succinct and bold proclamation kind of rattles a lot of feathers as we look at it. As, as people around us are, are looking to our faith, they're looking at, at Christians, and they're saying, you know what, J can you just keep that to yourself, right? You're allowed to believe whatever you believe, but you need to kind of keep it personal and, and not make it this public thing. If you want to believe in that, that God, that's fine, that's good for you, but kind of keep it quiet. So there's a little bit of... of of, of kind of skepticism and this criticisms of Christian for being so outward with our beliefs. And, and you know, in, in general, man, we're, we're getting ready to come into it with this election coming up, that, that beliefs in and of themselves tend to be very de de divisive, right? Like, and they can be very trivial things, like, I, I know for a fact that Michael Jordan is the best basketball player of all time. My poor son seems to think it's some guy named LeBron. I don't know, like, I don't, but, but all these different issues, like people just, we rise up, we have these beliefs, and we just know that we know, and, and they can be very divisive and, and kind of pushing each other away, um, you know, but we don't want to be divisive. This, the, the creed is meant to be, um, in, in, um, not inclusive, but uniting. It's meant to unite us around our commonalities rather than divide us on the things that we may disagree with other people. And there's other things that we can debate about and, 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 and things that are controversial, again, with the election. We, you know, talking about how do we overcome our national debt, um, you know, climate change and abortion, and, you know, pick all the election issues that are coming up. Again, they tend to be very divisive. This creed and other like it are meant to bring us together. And so today we're just going to discuss some more of those objections that may come up. And so, Lord, I just pray that you would center my mind now, and yeah, I just need your peace, Lord, and, and just that I would be able to communicate your heart, and, and you've poured out so much in this last couple of weeks regarding this, and, and I would just want to make sure that you speak through me, Lord, that, that, that we just get through everything you want to get to, and nothing that you don't. So just be with us now, Jesus, even more. Amen. All right, so we're going to go through just four objections, kind of critiques of, of, of outsiders that kind of look in and, and critique, well, why would you even look to the Apostles' Creed and other traditions, things like that? And even among some believers who, who are, are very set in their ways and, and maybe the creed isn't for them, it was you know, something that was meant for you know, centuries ago. So we're just going to look at a few of these. Um, and the first kind of critique that, that comes up is, isn't the Apostles' Creed unbiblical? Well, in fact, it is not in the Bible, so in that sense, it is unbiblical. But, and in the most real sense, it is incredibly biblical. It is, the, it, it is a very distinct, succinct kind of description and summary of what we read throughout from page to page in your scriptures. And so it is incredibly biblical. And, and, but I like the question, is it biblical? I think we need to be asking that about everything we do and we come in contact, especially in this day and age. I think, is it biblical is a wonderful question we need to ask all the time when it comes to what we watch, what we hear, what we, we read, all the things that we come in contact with. That should be our starting point. Is it biblical? Um, 
you know, some people might say that, you know, if it's in the Bible, it's a good thing, but if it's not in the Bible, well, then that's kind of bad. And, and so that to you, I would want to say, well, well, what do we do with, like, Lent and Ash Wednesday or that holiday Christmas? Like, I don't read, do you guys ever read about, like, Christmas and, and, and all the things? A lot of these different things that we have as traditions that we've built into and a way, good things that we use to celebrate Jesus and all that he's done and his kingdom and God and all of that are not necessarily laid out in a biblical context. So I just want to say with that, if, if something is extra biblical, do you guys know what that, word, that means? It just means that it's, it's, it's outside of what is actually written in the word of God. It can still be a biblical concept. So even though it's extra biblical, doesn't mean it's unbiblical or not holy or God ordained. And so we look at this in context, um, you know, we Protestants um, tend to, and I don't say we, <laughs> I want to be very gentle, but that we, we tend to kind of look at other religions who are very liturgical in, in that sense, maybe even the Catholic faith, you know, with the, with the, the, Reform, the Protestant Reformation that went on, and we kind of look at the, our Catholic brothers and sisters and be like, oh, well, they're just so stuck on, on tradition, and they're, they're doing things because that's the way that it's always done, and there's no thinking involved. And actually, at the Reformation, you know, we, we kind of adopted the, bottle, uh, the Bible as Protestants, and then because there was this horrible split between Protestants and Catholics, we kind of pushed them over there, like, well, everything you're going to hold on to, we're going to hold on to this. And so we've created this divide that was never intended to be there. In fact, if we look at um, that, the second sentence there, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy the actual word there that it kind of originated here was Catholic. I believe in the, in, the, in, the, in the Holy Catholic Church. Well, Catholic literally means universal. And so what happened is, is, is the Catholic faith took on that word, and now we as Protestants are like, oh, no, we're not going to read that. We're going to change it to universal. And, and so, again, I just say this all to say that we, we try to be divisive. And things like this creed are meant to pull us back together and concentrate on what's really important. And what's important is we can have the Bible, we can, we can read it and believe it's absolutely 100% inerrant, it's infallible, it's divinely uh, inspired, all these things. And we can still have these incredible traditions that, that are very God-honoring, that he's honored and are blessing in our midst as well. So some might say, well, why do we need this extra kind of thing, right? It's, it's not in Scripture. Doesn't Scripture warn us not to add anything to the words that we read in the Bible? It absolutely does warn us there. Um, so why do we do it? Why do we add? Well, here, in case, if you pull out your Bible and you have your hard copy, you probably have chapters, right, and verses, and, and, and even headings of, of what the passage is about. Well, if, you, if you're all about, well, don't add anything to the Bible, then you can just start reading it without the chapters, without the verses. Like, these were added later to help us. In the same way, these traditions, these things that we read are meant to help us and supplement and add to the benefits of Scripture. And so again, just because it's extra biblical outside of what is actually written in the book we call the Bible, just because it's, it's not in there doesn't mean it's unbiblical. The second one I want to look at is, isn't the Apostles' Creed outdated and irrelevant? And to that, it's simple, that truth is timeless. That it's never outdated, it's never irrelevant. Um, it, it, it's this plumb line that we start, it's, it's very foundational, and we build from that. Um, I love this phrase, that the, the Creed helps us identify counterfeits we have so many counterfeits that we deal with in this life it's this hodgepodge of all kinds of different religions and you take a little bit of here oh that sounds good i'll take some of that a little bit of this it's like going through the buffet right you just load up your plate with whatever you feel like well the creed and things like that are meant to help us identify the counterfeits um are you guys familiar with deep uh deep fakes like pictures and videos this is an actual these are videos that you can look up just deep fake and tom cruise and this come up but um i want you to pick out which is the real tom cruise in these top three just as you look at it who thinks it's the far left 
Do you think that's the real one? One person. Who thinks it's the middle one, that that's the real picture of him? Who thinks it's the far on this side? Who has no idea? (laughs) Guess what? They're all fake. Every one of them. And if you go and you research that and you watch a video, you will see it looks and sounds like Tom Cruise. These are completely and totally fake. My point with all of this is, number one, as scary as all get out, but number two is that we live in a time where we need to be able to spot the counterfeit. The creed can help us do that. It returns us to our commonalities of what's important. Of what's important, It gets away from all this peripheral kind of junk that clouds us up, divides us from other denominations, other churches, other from this and that. We need to come back to this commonality. This is what we are about. And the creed helps us do that. I believe in God, the Father, the creator of the heaven and the earth. I believe in Jesus, the son who died and, and buried and rose again. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Those things give me goosebumps, literally, right now. Like, that is what we are about. And if you want to come in and get divisive and and know, well, you know, whatever it may be, pick your topic and and you're going to plant a flag and this is where I'm at, man, you are so far off from what I believe Scripture intends and our our early founders looked at and said, man, let's, Let's just kind of centralize what we believe. Let's start from here. And if we have that in common, everything else can just take care of itself. <sighs> All right, we're going to skip that. Oh, that's good, though. So what, what, <laughs> what I feel like the creed does, it, again, it helps us spot the counterfeit. I had a great quote. Maybe I'll share it online. Um, it, it just helps us spot the counterfeit, which is a big problem in so much of what we do. It helps us keep on the path. You know, I, I went on a, a horseback riding trip out west with David Lively, one of our kind of people who used to go here. And, and it, we came up to this sign. We were kind of in the backwoods. No, I mean, it was really out there. And there was a, a small sign. It was almost etched in. It says, stay on the path. And we're like, okay, come on. And like, so we, and they weren't kidding. Like, that we went up a little bit further, and it literally, like, we, we had to go around because the cliff was, like, I mean, hundreds of feet straight down, and it was, like, you couldn't even, you had to, it's one of these where you're, like, creeping alongside, and it's, like, stay on the path, and I feel like that's what the creed is shouting, stay on the path, this is what matters, all this other stuff is it important, and, and are we allowed to have opinions and preferences? Absolutely. But if it's dividing you from other God-loving Christians, then it's, it's, not, it's, just, it's not okay. Don't bring your divisiveness into the church. Amen. That's what, I mean, Scripture says it over and over and over and over. And that's, again, this keeps us on the path, or like rumple strips. I'm going to write a book. That's my first book, Rumple Strips. You know, like on the highway, we got this big, wide lane, and I feel like it's Christianity, like, we, we can all believe that we all have our different lanes, and, but we're all heading the same direction. And then the creed and things like this are like the rumple strips. It's like, you know, and then you wake up because you were napping. And, <laughs> but I feel like that's what we're, we're talking about is these rumple strips are these important things or, or guardrails. You know, it's like a guardrail is meant to keep you from falling off the cliff. Same with the Apostles' Creed that we see here. Okay, number three. We are going to get through all of this. Okay, number three. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, number three. Isn't the Apostles' Creed too rote and ritualistic? Like, you know, we're, we're in this age of where, we, I mean, look at the way I'm dressed, for Pete's sake, right? We're, we're all casual, and, and I never want us to get too casual with our faith. You know, we take, we always say that we take God incredibly serious but not ourselves. You know, we can laugh at ourselves, and and I believe God is okay with us being casual as we come to him, as long as we are totally reverent. And and so some might say, again, isn't it too rote, too rich, you know, too ritualistic, and and it's so formal, and and, and kind of hold it up there, and it's maybe too mechanical. It doesn't feel real personal, you know, and, and real, like, snuggly, but I think it's just the opposite. I think it reminds us of our first love. It's, it's kind of like our marriage vows. We are able to, to kind of recite that and be like, God, I believe 
It's, I don't, there's just something incredibly personal about it. It says, I believe in God the Father that you created the heavens and the earth. If you, if you want to let your, your prayer life come alive, pray through the creed. Pray through the Lord's Prayer. Find, find different things like this to anchor to and allow this to become your personal prayer. Um, I want to look at John 9. Um, you can open up there, but the, John 9 in, in general is about this blind man who has been blind from birth. And, and the Pharisees are always confronting Jesus. They, like, they, they come and talk to him and say, hey, this blind man over here, is that his sin or from his parents? You know, it's like, they don't even call it. He's called the blind man. He doesn't even have a name in here. And it's just like they're, they're wanting to question him. And, and so Jesus says, you know, this is on the Sabbath, which is a whole other thing. And, and Jesus comes and he sp- this is weird. He spits on the ground, makes a little bit of mud, and then wipes it on the, the blind man's eyes. And then he says, go wash in this pool. And as this blind man does and believes, God totally heals him. And he can totally see. You know, with the, the spit mud that is on it, you know, like, that's just weird. But anyway, so, so he does this, and he goes home, and he's totally restored in his sight. And the Pharisees are all about, whoa, what happened? Like, this doesn't fit our box. Like, who was this guy? What happened? How did this happen? Where did you find this in Scripture? Like, we, we need to know all the things, everything lining up before we can believe in this incredibly miraculous thing. They even call in the, the, the guy's family. They're like, hey, you know him. Like, was he b- really blind, like, from birth? And they're like, ask him. Like, he's a grown adult. And so, anyway, Jesus later, um, th- this happens, and the man goes off, and he's telling everybody. And, and Jesus finds him later and says this in John 9, 35. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. They threw this man out. Uh, from the presence of the Pharisees, and he finds out that they threw him out, and when he found him, he said, do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? The man asked. Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, you have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped him. I just love the simplicity that he didn't know how He didn't know why. He didn't know theology. He didn't know doctrine. He didn't know how all of this fit in. He had this simple belief in what he experienced in an encounter with Jesus. He says, Lord, I believe, just in the simplest way. And so I feel like that's what the the, the creed does for us. It, It allows us to simplify our thinking. We try to make I try to make my, my, my faith and my Christianity so complex and all of the different things. And, and Jesus is like, just bring it back to right here. Can you just believe that I am the son of God, that I did die for you on a cross, that, that, that my blood is enough? And, and do you have to know how and why and figure that out? And, and how many days do you have to know about, do you have to be this apologetic wizard and, and know how creation was started? Was it in seven literal days? Was it a gap theory? Was there, is it an old earth or a new earth? And billions of years or six, you don't have to know any of that. You don't have to know how the end times are going to end and exactly how it plays out and when the tribulation. You don't have to know that. I, we, you, we have to know that Jesus died on a cross for our personal sin. And that when God, because of that, God the Father receives that and says, now that I look at those who believe in Jesus, I see Jesus' righteousness when he looks at my and your sin. That's what I have to know. And then because of that, I can live out and I can pursue and I can and go and I can serve and love, hoping to bring people into that simple truth. Again, these simple truths, and we're going to be unpacking this creed a little bit more and going kind of more, you know, uh, sentence by sentence and, and unpacking what that literally means. But at the end of the day, it comes back and simplifies and is a wonderful summary of what our entire book we call the Bible is about. In the last kind of, I'm going to look at one more verse here. Um, you can copy those if you want. I, I like how Stephen Covey says, it. I don't feel like he wrote this. I feel like this has just been around forever. But he says, this is what's important. When we look at this, the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. 
right? Like all these things, and the vineyard calls it just the main and the plain. Like all these, you know, we can to talk about that. I love debate, not debating, but I love discussing, you know, the ins and outs of scripture. What does it mean in this? But at the end of the day, it's about the main and the plain and keeping it simple. The last one, isn't the Apostles' Creed just based on ancient myths? No, not really. But I'm going to dump, just, I, I want to read this last scripture because it ties into the ending. It's John 20, and this is talking about Thomas. So a lot of people are like, um, doubt. poor guy gets called Doubting Thomas, you know? And I feel like he's every man and woman ever, right? We all have these moments. So poor Thomas, but, but he's saying this, and, and starting in verse 25, so the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he, Thomas, said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hands into his side, I will not believe. I want to stop there and just say, how many different times have we, now maybe you're not this bold or won't, won't admit this in public, but have we kind of anchored into like, God, unless you show up in a certain way or or if you do this, or you need to heal this person, or mend this broken relationship, or find a way to pay my bills at the end of the month, or fill in your blank, any and all these, how many times have we kind of given God this, this kind of ultimatum? Like, unless I can put my hands in his side, I'm not going to believe until I see proof, evidence, if I can see it, touch it, and all these things. So I think a lot of times, at least for me, I can relate with Thomas. Going into verse 26, a week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. I would have been, I know why he said that, because they were probably freaking out that this, Jesus, wait, weren't you dead? And like, so then he said to Thomas, put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. That's where God wants us to get. We are in a, in a time where we don't see maybe the miracles that we read about in the Bible like over and over and over and over. I think miracles are happening all the time. But do we see a blind, I don't, I've never seen a blind man from birth healed ever. Maybe you have, and I pray, God, I believe there, we're, we're in a time, and, and I believe we're coming into a time where we're, that's going to be more and more common, that there's going to be a time of signs and wonders, and, and I want to pray into that more and more. But right here, right now, I feel like we're in this place of, of, of blessed are those who haven't seen and still believe. That's the creed, I believe. What can you believe in? I don't know of a lot of... I know I can believe in God the Father, creator of heaven and earth. I can believe Jesus, his one and only son, who, who died on a cross and rose again. I can believe in the whole, I can simply believe in those things. And I hope that you, wherever you are today, can just move a little bit closer to belief. Last thing I'll leave you with, and, and we'll pray. Um, the world says, if I hadn't seen it, I never would have believed it. We're very much like Thomas a lot of times. If I hadn't have seen it, then I wouldn't have believed it. Whereas our faith says, if I hadn't have believed it, I never would have seen it. If you want to see the movement of, your, uh, uh, movement of God in your life, believe. Start with believe. What can you believe in? Maybe it's only a few things. Maybe it's this. Can you believe in God the Father? Can you believe in Jesus? Can, knowing he's going to figure everything else, can we at least believe in the little things? knowing that when we do, he's going to open us up to even bigger things. So go ahead and stand with me, if you will. I'm just going to pray a blessing on you. Um, I, I, we always want to leave with an opportunity to get prayer. If you're out here today um, for the sake of time and getting our little kids, little kids, kids, our little people, we want to be able to pray with any and all of you. We will stay as long. So I'm going to have um, just our prayer people, like as I release you, we're going to be out front just praying with you. And, it, and if, if, if you want any prayer, like I just, I don't believe, but I want to believe. We want to pray with you. If you need physical healing, if you need anything at all, we want to pray with you. We believe, we believe in the power of prayer, that prayer changes things. And so just know that's available once we leave. 
But Lord, we just thank you that you have everything figured out, God. From the beginning, before we were even created, God, before you created the heavens and the earth, you had a plan and a purpose that we would be in perfect unity with you. And although we've tried to mess it up over thousands and thousands of years, over and over in different ways, we try to mess it up, but you, your, your, your plan always moves forward. And you just call us to simple, childlike faith that we would believe as innocently as children, not knowing how and why and when and where and what and all the things, God, but, but just the simplicity of saying, I believe in you, God the Father, creator of heaven and earth and me. I believe that you gave us your son Jesus to die on our behalf. And as we accept him and all that he's done for us, that you, that you promise the gift of the Holy Spirit to live in us, that you not only are concerned about us from a distant distance, but you are willing to come into each and every one of us. So Lord, we praise you for that. Say you are worthy. As much as we are, wherever we are today, I just pray that each of us would say, I believe. Help me grow in my faith and in in even more belief. I just pray this for all of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You are welcome to take off. This is the freedom we cried for. This is the